Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the black void of my heart. Uh, today, we're talking about <laughs> an Indiegogo campaign, I believe it was. No, it wasn't an Indiegogo campaign, it was a... Was it a... Go fund me? Or something like that? Okay, Damn go it. fund me, or whatever it is. What it is, is Actually, that... you know what, it was a Kickstarter. Ah, Kickstarter. To God. Yeah, it was an honest to God Kickstarter. See, we didn't entirely mess this up, but I got it pulled up here. There's a, the rundown on this is we actually found a really neat RPG, um, or at least I did. I saw posted um, this indie, uh, bl this indie um, RPG, tabletop RPG that has come out, or that will be coming out, called Black Void. And it's actually a really interesting premise. There's a lot of potential here. And so we've actually looked at the beta materials, the PDF for it, and um, we're just going to give you our, our first our first look and our, our thoughts. First, our first thoughts, yes. Now, for me, the aesthetic, art design, art direction, the whole, entire theme and concept behind it, I love it. Now, it is a... I, I like it, too. I... I think that it's got a lot of flavor, and to give you guys an idea of what you're looking at, this is a a dark, gritty, um, Far East sort of flavored game. Though I, I suppose it could really be flavored any ancient culture or civilization, but they tend to be leaning for right now in the materials very sort of Middle Eastern at the moment. Yes. Now... For me, what has gravitated me to enjoying that concept is that man has fallen and is attempting to rise again. It's essentially the whole basic elevator pitch. Quick couple seconds. And they're trying to say, it's not your typical good versus evil game. Uh, they, they, this is the gray level zone. Again, this is my like. This is the dark heresy death watch feel. That is what I love about it. Because you're not constrained by preconceived notions of you have to fight good and get it you gotta fight evil and it allows your characters to actually delve into the talents that are in this game um one of the things that i love comes down to the character creation and it's not your typical worrying about awareness um agility strength stamina no no no, no. i'm not talking about that i'm talking about your ability to cosmetically and mechanically make your characters unique. Now, some yeah. of the attributes would be having wings, having horns, stuff like that. Now, this may seem small, minuscule. Well, it's a big a lot deal. Of things. Yeah, it is a big deal. There's a lot of things to you can do. A lot of different options, and I think if you're a first-time player, it might actually be a little bit difficult to make those kinds of choices because you suddenly have a lot of choices whereas D, D has you know fewer choices and it's easier to to choose and you know just go in choose a race choose a class but with this you're all basically human or humanoid and so that means you're either a human or you're a half breed meaning you're a half alien to explain a little bit of the the lore basically what they're saying what happens in this lore is that you have humanity, and humanity is um, sort of sucked up by this other realm of existence, this black void. And what happens is it transports them through other parts of the galaxy to live on these planets that are not originally their own. And so a lot of humans die. And the the remaining ones are not necessarily in great standing, and they're just doing what they can to survive. So, um, and, and some of that, I suppose, is uh, mating with the locals. So there you are. <laughs> that's how you get the half-breeds. Of course well, that's how you get the half-breeds. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but no, uh, it's, it's the, this is the things, like, what I like about it is... They don't hide from the kind of muddied zone. Now, you got the caste system that's already possible in there. And powers, which is, again, for me, this is the part that starts, not a magic guy, but it starts making me looking and thinking, this is something that someone's starting to think on. 
powers about bloodletting, essentially sacrificing animals and creatures and entities for magical uh, buffs, I'll yeah, say. You do you do blood rituals, and that's actually how you're able to get certain things to magically happen. And if you mess up, if you do it wrong, there are consequences for your actions, and you can have mild madness that happens to you for a while. Or uh, just like a variety of things. I actually have, have an entire table of things here that, um, like, we could even read it out, but I'm not quite there yet. Um, I'm not quite to that page right now, so I'm going to try and get to there. Well, I mean, well, here's <laughs> the thing. Like, one of the other things is that what Rachel touched on is the concept of madness. And this is, again, small tables on the side during the game that, for me personally, yeah. as a DM, this is very great for storytelling and building because they have essentially damnation, corruption, enlightenment, stuff like that. Now, I'm not using the proper terms, but it's many of those important mm -hmm. factors that as a DM, you you naturally build on the back uh, on the back side of the game uh, for your players yeah. if you're making if you're a good DM and this one's mechanically slid in there. And it's really it's actually pretty good. One of the things that we've got here I'm actually looking at the table right now is that these things are associated with botched blood rituals. And so you can be traumatized and weakened by the ritual. The recipient is reluctant to partake in any other blood letting ritual for D3 days, frightened by the occurrence of the backlash. So basically you can develop a, a phobia of even doing the blood rituals at all, if I'm looking at this correctly. Or um, you could feel nauseated, queasy, um, get, take a penalty to physical action rolls for 12 hours. Like you could have minor ticks, shakes and shivering, all kinds of stuff that can happen if the blood ritual goes wrong. Exactly. Well, well that's the thing. Is like for me, again, magic is one of those hard things to really get locked down perfectly. And either you got it uh, D and D style, which is essentially, I'd argue, boring but um, easy and quick to do. But you got this that I say is the dark heresy variety. Is if you fuck up, if you have a negative fail, it's going to mean something when you fail. And for me, that's kind of what makes every action important. It makes you think, oh my god, what am I going to do? How am I going to handle this? Because when you start playing around with this stuff, like the Black Void, you're touching into some stuff that your characters and the world, like, you don't understand properly. And that's going to affect you. It does, and it also makes the tools that you're going to play around with not toys. They literally, it starts making you start thinking, how am I going to build this character? What chances am I going to take? These are little mechanical things. This is why Black Void has kind of gotten my attention when Rachel uh, showed it to me, because, like, there's a lot of little things that, after a while... They start adding up. Um, but as a DM, for me personally, like this is very much fantasy based. Um, basically, I was looking at like there's like essentially a small, small amount of armor types in there. Damage it has its own damage reduction. How heavy, how heavy it is, properties, the negative aspects. Again, a return to some basic concepts that came before of. You can't do certain things if you have certain pieces of armor on. It gives you certain disadvantages. Again, I love that because it allows for you to build your characters, your classes. You can build your character that is this titan of a strong person, always in plate, or not plate armor, I think mm. in this one the higher, highest was splint armor, but you're looking mm. at armor that is essentially is going to slow you down, not give you great uh, bodily movement, but... Yeah, if someone hits you, it's going to be a fucking bitch for them to fucking cut into it. <laughs> yeah, and there's a lot of stuff. There's just a lot I'm going through, just scrolling through here. There are things like attaining enlightenment. There's also the possibility of losing all of your sanity. Because there, there's actually such a thing as sanity points from what I'm looking at here. And you can lose... There's even different levels of madness that you can go into. From certain things going horribly, horribly wrong, um, and I said mostly I think it's from exploring the cosmos and stuff through the void. So it's, there's all kinds of stuff that that I'm just looking at going through here. It's there's so much. There's just like so much that is is good here. The only thing 
um, I, I don't know. It, it's just that my only cons well, one of my few concerns is that in s some ways this is a little simplistic. It could it could um, mm -hmm. use to be a little more number crunchy in places. It could use to have actual archetypes or something to guide new players. But yeah, you're a bit like me that a little more rigidity in some aspects to help out. <laughs> yeah, well, mainly because you know it helps new players. But I think this would actually be better for more experienced players. And I think that it's good that they're creating something that's a little bit more dark and gritty and is not afraid to um, explore all of this stuff. Because from like well, built into the plot, you're playing as a member, as a person who is a um, who is castless. And by definition, that makes you the lowest of the low. And so it means that you're going to be doing things or doing missions, doing things for other people that, like the shit tier jobs that nobody else wants to touch. So it's going to be a lot of interesting things to go through, I think. Probably like traveling through the void or maybe engaging in things that are morally gray. So that's, you know, that's a lot of <laughs> fun things to play around with because it's survival by any means necessary and that is pretty cool. It's a very interesting concept. It sounds very cutthroat. So, I'm interested. <laughs> well, one of the other things is that combat is essentially what most of these games always boil down to, and you got a large list of combat actions, and for me it has a reminiscence of L5R, and Rachel knows how much I get excited over that game. Um, you got backstab, all-out attack, called attack, defensive stance. It's like these are actually little things that will start adding up. It is adding to the complexity in some aspects. Now, I don't know if this game is properly built for it, because just looking at it like something seems off, it seems like it's a little rough around the edges, still looks good, still looks fun, don't get me wrong, but it's these little things that will start adding up. And well, One, one yeah, thing to keep in mind, though, is that this, what we're looking at, is unfinished, and they've clarified that... It, things are unfinished in that what we're looking at is a sample of the game. The rest of it hasn't been hasn't been finished as far as I know. So that's why I'm not as upset by some of the artwork, which seems unfinished. I think some of it is placeholder, what I'm seeing here in the um, in the PDF. Some of it is fantastic. Don't get me wrong, but that's like I said, a lot of this seems like it's. They're showing us uh, people who would want to donate to it, and I think I will don I will actually um, place the Kickstarter link and to the the main interesting stuff about this in the you know in the description below, so that you guys can give it a look as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are links from the Kickstarter where you too can go to get the beta PDF and be a part of testing the game. So, that is something to think about. Well, exactly. And this is, again, playing the game, setting up the game. One of the things that I think people need to take into account is when we talk about dark and gritty, I do use Dark Heresy as an example because this kind of takes a page out of Dark Heresy because it's damage and injuries. Essentially, if you suffer a, 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 a excess of damage, you can have crippling injuries, be it bruised, hurt, broken bones, critical mishaps, incapacitations, and that, for me, oh my god, is so much importance to you, because it doesn't, it makes combat into not just lethality, even a successful encounter can already start making the party the all vaunted statement of the new uh, Vogue is the story and the th storytelling. It's like, yeah, you mechanically now have, oh my god, you survived this battle, and it's not just, okay, I'm down to one, to one hit point now, uh, Cl uh, Claire, kill me. It's, I survived this battle, I am bruised up, I can't move anymore, I cannot swing my sword, my left arm is dislocated mechanically. It starts making you go, oh my god, the storytelling that comes with the rehealing over that stuff. That is powerful. Or, well, sanity and madness, which is another aspect that I think we touched on, is that yeah. 
Oh god. <laughs> we should probably talk about mechanics, and the main thing to know is that this is not a D20 system, this is a D12 system. Um, I think we, we talked about that it seems simple, but like in some cases overly mm-hmm. simple. Uh, what do you think? Well, it does seem a bit too simple for my taste. That is just me. But then again, I do like Dark Heresy. I do like my 3.5. Yeah. I do like my L5R. So take this with a grain of salt, everyone. Yeah. And and character building is a little more like L5R in that what happens is that you're given points to oh, put into... Oh, 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 yes. Basically to buy traits and abilities. And things like that. So, the I guess this is the reason why it's a classless system because they will give you the ability to do things that are entirely that are seemingly unrelated mm-hmm. to each other, and have these weird talents, which makes sense if you're trying to be that type of person who has to hustle and gain all of these different varying skills. So it's kind of like a real person. Well, I mean, like, for me, it's, the reason why I love this style is um, it's the only system of experience points for me personally that I will never say no to. Because, like, L5R, every session you're handed out experience points um, in a limited number. And it means you earn it. It's not the... It's not the D&D kill enough monsters, here's my here's my level up chip, or the, hey, we made it so far, where's our checkpoint to level up? Like, it, it doesn't have that concept in there, which, in my eyes, kind of ruins natural storytelling, natural character growth. It's the L5R style, like this, that, hey, uh, you survived this, here's three experience points. Well, you're in the middle of this fighting, and you've been fighting for a long time, you're going to most likely go, hey... I'm in this situation where I'm going to be fighting for a bit. I think I'm going to put a couple points into my swordsmanship. And it naturally makes sense. Mm-hmm. Or you start realizing, okay, I'm holding on to these experience points, and I know I'm going to go to court. So during our downtime, I'm going to study up on uh, politics or study up on mm-hmm. my language to have a silver a silver tongue. Again, yeah. like, little things that make sense. Where When you look at something like D&D or these yeah, other systems... Definitely. There's yeah, definitely well, an option here. Well, again, like it allows for the very natural glide into a real character arc, a real character growth. The vaunted system of uh, of this new vogue that people call is about the narrative, the the story, the storytelling of this thing. It's like you now have mechanics that will make it perfect for you. <laughs> yeah, there's there's so many towns to go through. I feel bad because we've only got so much time to try and shove as much of the awesomeness of what I'm seeing mm-hmm. into this podcast. <laughs> We've only got so much time. We don't want to to drag you out here for like beyond 30 minutes, but well, I mean, there's it, a lot to go on. There's, there's 40, a lot. Yeah. At. There's 40 pages, which is a, just a quick little excerpt from this. Um, sign up for them. Try to get into the beta. It's kind of free as long as you do it. It, yeah, it looks good. I would it imagine, looks fun. I would imagine it's still available that you can actually buy this and, the book version, mm-hmm. or I think you can also d- donate to them for this. Like, keep in mind, also we are not um, sponsored. We are not associated with these people. We have just seen the Kickstarter, and we so, like it, <laughs> and we like it. But if if the people who have made this game shut discover up, the Rachel. podcast, just shut up, just shut up, Rachel. <laughs> they're not gonna f- bankroll us. Don't worry. <laughs> they're not gonna bankroll us. Yeah, but. We, we, want, we want you guys to know that we think this is really great and it has a lot of potential. I promise I'm not blinking twice to say it's all my own free will. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. No, but there's so, yeah. much, there's so much here. Like, uh, talents are very interesting here. One of the things that I also liked was that if you go the half-breed route, one of the abilities that you have the, that you can possibly choose as part being part of um, as being a half-breed is you can actually have an extra sensory perception of some kind. So you could have echolocation. It's actually of your design. So you get to choose some extra sensory ability um, that is unique. And that's actually really neat. You literally could like be able to sort of taste fear or something like that. Well, There's I mean, all like- kinds of stuff that you could do. It sounds really cool. 
Well, and that's that's for me. That's a great thing as a D and D for building NPCs and for a player itself. It allows you to have a legitimate special snowflake moment that's not retarded. I'm I'm bred with this creature that uses echolocation. Uh, technically, you got blind flight, uh, blind fighting in a way. Like you can't get lost in the pitch dark, yeah, you and that makes have... you a value, and it's it makes you a valuable asset to your party. Mm-hmm. Also, there are things like um, I'm trying to remember precisely what it was. I can actually scroll up through here and actually get get to this, but um, to the actual table. But one of the things you can do is also another option. But here's here's the thing that I really feel is missing, and I really want this to be here in the final version, or I hope will be here in the final version, is to actually know what these species are. Actually have some defined species that would have these things built in, so that it has a history and a background, so you're, you can build a character that is sort of struggling between two worlds, or a world that is alien to them, um, in more ways than one, like a culture... Like, you, you know nothing about that, and yet you look just enough like it to, you know, be negatively affected by it. Because you actually do take a, a point decrease, if I'm, a social point decrease to it if you go the half-breed route, because it's going to be less socially acceptable, and you're going to possibly be seen as weird. But you can also choose things like, um, one of them is your skin can can sort of be like a chameleon's and blend in with the surroundings, but your clothing will not. So just just to let you know, you'd probably have to be a nudist to make this fully work. I knew you were gonna do that. I knew you were gonna do that. <laughs> well you thought it too. <laughs> Clearly expressed that you cannot that you cannot um, change your clothing to do the exact same thing. So you'd have to be very comfortable with just Swinging it out there. Yes. Let, let everything <laughs> hang out. But yes. Other things, other things are like wings and stuff like that, and they explain that varying sizes will let you do different things. So, but there's a lot of stuff there. Just sorry, you can move on to whatever you think. No, but no, but that that's things like for me personally, why this system gathers so much attention for me. Like for me. Like, I think when the artwork, I think it's on page 10, talking about, like, horns and wings, like, not all of it's going to be cosmetically appealing. And for me, as a DM, this is the time to reward them. And, again, this is where you'll 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 be able to see, as a DM, your great players from your average players, that they will roll with their characters' advantages and disadvantages. They will know, I'm a half-breed. I have extra sense, sensory uh, perception. Oh, that means my eyes probably look a little different. My ears look weird, so it's going to make people uncomfortable. Or I have claws that my fingers turn into these long-like talons, or I have long-like talons. Like, people are not going to want to talk with me, so I'm probably not the best person to also try to pick a lock. Yeah. They actually explained that if you if you have the long claws, you're actually going to have... Um, you're going to have some things with motor skills that are going to be hindered by that. So, yeah. But yes, I, I think we've kind of given everyone a quick little rundown. There's... I'm just so excited. <laughs> I'm so, I want to play this. It sounds, it seems really cool. Even if the mechanics are a little bit weird, I'm willing to give it a shot. Like, a little bit different. Um, I'm willing to give it a shot just because it seems like an interesting world and I'm willing to, you know... Give it a shot. <laughs> it's probably got limitations and things. And the reason I'm so open-minded is there's a lot we haven't seen yet. The project isn't com- isn't fully complete. For all I know, this could just go down in flames. I don't know. But for right now, we're intrigued. <laughs> oh, yes, we are intrigued. Now, that, I think, is the best way to leave it out. Because when you have a world like this of dark and dreary moral grays constantly upon you... Oh, there's all options for intrigue. Well, thank you for joining us. Tell us what you think. Like, subscribe, let us know what you think. Um, (laughs) Follow us on the Twitter and on here. And let us know what you think in the comment section below. Thank you, guys. Good night. Bye.